Chad, first of all, uh, when you had to sit the other day, you were telling me that was pretty tough to, to take when you had to sit because of the right card. What what did you do during the game? What did you watch? What were you thinking? Well, during the game, I mean, I, I just sat on the bench, didn't want to say anything too much um, to anybody because I was still pretty hurt about it because, I mean, this is my team, this is my love, this is my sport. So I didn't really know how to take it because, like I said, it was the first game that I, I have missed since I've been here at William Jewell. And so I just kind of was watching the back line because we had two freshmen starting, Brian Jones and Derek Harvey. So really I was just trying to watch them and help Pete and Squires out during halftime and then even at the end of the game before overtime to try to help them figure out how to keep the line straight and stuff like that. You coached them up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I want to coach one day, so yeah, I well, kind of was practicing. You're reading my mind because that's what I was going to ask you. Is that in your future? Yeah, I would love to coach one day. I mean, I don't know if it'll ever happen at the college level, but I definitely want to have my own club team, have a, have a youth team, and raise them in the ranks and send them off to college one day like my club coach did. What's your major here at Jewel? At William Jewel, I'm a business administration major with an emphasis in entrepreneurial leadership. So you could be the owner of maybe even a professional team someday. Yeah, maybe. That'd be really cool. That would be, be crazy. Good. What kind of business would you like to get into? Um, I'm really not sure right now. I'm just kind of living the dream, living William Jewel, just playing soccer every day. Yeah, so you, I really don't know what I want to do. What's that like? Uh, what's a day like for you, and, and what's your life like right now? Man, a day in the shoes of Chad Newman. Yeah. Well, well, I I don't have to get up early. It's nice. I got late classes, and then I usually just in my downtime I play a lot of FIFA. I'm an RA in Eden Hall, so play a lot of FIFA with my residents, and always have a ball like if I'm walking down the hall I'll have a ball at my foot knocking it here and there kicking even it in, in the hallways yeah even RAs in the hallways. are allowed to do play ball in the house exactly <laughs> I, we get rid of the rules whenever we get a place so. yeah you probably shouldn't say that on camera <laughs> yeah. well, talk about RAing because that's kind of a form of coaching yeah I mean I'm a kind of a mentor for all the freshmen um, Eaton Hall is a freshman dorm and I've been this is my second year there so I've had the now sophomores last year and then this now freshman class, so I have some dirt on all the little freshmen and sophomores that, that I don't even know about. So, All right, tell me about your passion for soccer, because obviously it's something that runs pretty deep. Man, passion for soccer. I love it. Like, watching it, playing it, coaching it, doing anything with soccer. Like I said, I play FIFA all day long whenever I'm not on the field, but in the off season, I want to play every day, whether it's going down and taking shots, just knocking a ball, just anything and everything. This game is my life. I love it. Why not football or, or basketball or some other sport? What, what made you go soccer? Well, when I was a freshman in high school, I was actually thinking about doubling with football and soccer in the fall, but I was like five foot, 120 pounds, and I had a chance to play varsity soccer my freshman year, so I said, well, I guess I'll do that. And then, but also, I have a huge passion for basketball. I'm, a, I'm an athlete. I love it all. play all the intramural sports here. So the fact that I didn't get to play basketball it's kind of heartbreaking, but I mean, I still get get my share of hoops in here and there. Oh, and there's a kind of a correlation there because I think it's Steve Nash has such a yeah. background. Yeah. Is that the same for you? Do you find a correlation between the skills? I guess you could say that. I mean, I feel like I'm pretty athletic. I can run pretty fast, jump pretty high. So I don't know. I enjoy doing anything and everything, all kinds of sports. How about the idea that uh, when you're playing in defensive back or even in midfield, you don't get as many scoring opportunities, that sort of thing? Just, uh, you go unrecognized, what I'm trying to say. Or, yeah. How do you feel about that? Man, well, in high school, I was actually a forward. I actually was up top my entire career until I got here at Jewel. So now being in the back and having to have a defensive mindset is kind of tough. Um, I mean, yeah, we go unnoticed, but that's for the papers that we go unnoticed. The team knows that we're there for them, that we do our job, that we keep them out of the goal so they can score 1-0, we can get 1-0 wins and stuff like that. I know this year has been a little different system, you've adjusted some things. Can you kind of ca categorically tell us what your responsibilities are, maybe one after another? Well, at center back, um, first is to keep them out of the goal. That's just the main job, that's what you do. And then really with Squires and I um, in the back, we kind of have a system that we run that I kind of stay off. and. I have some speed, so I chase down anybody that they try to play the ball over the top while he's stepping into people, winning headers, tackling on the ball. So basically, I guess I keep him out of goal and then I chase people down to keep the ball for our own team. How about the communication that goes on between you and the keeper? What's that like? Man, me and the keeper, Joe Keevan, he, uh, he actually lives right across the hall from me, so we, we're talking about the game all the time, figuring out what we can do better. 
but the communication is doing really well whenever I'm in there. Um, I think we've given up eight goals, I think, is the stat whenever I'm in the game. Um, and him and I really have a good relationship, good communication, um, and he's really stepped up big for us this year. Chad, he's been kind of a surprise, you know, in the, going into the, the regular season, and he's played so well. What makes him a good goalie? Man, he works hard every day. He wants it. He, uh, he's only been playing keeper since he was a sophomore in high school, so he wants to learn. He wants to get better. He wants to do so much better every day. He, he doesn't ever just sit back and say, oh, we're having a really good season. I'm good enough. He wants to work every day. Have you given him some pointers? Have you coached him up a little bit through yeah, the Yeah, I mean, I've never played keeper, so I try to, but I really don't know what to say to him. But, yeah, I go down and I work out with him every now and then. So, What's the jump like from high school to college? What was it like for you? Man, the jump from high school to soccer, uh, college, uh, it's, a, it's just a lot faster game. Like, you just have to take it all in a lot quicker. you got to know what you're doing before the ball gets to you. You really just got it's just the speed of play that steps up. Then what was the jump like from NAIA to NCAA? NAIA to NCAA, the jump was, the games were tougher every, every game. There was no gimme games. There was no games that were off. Like, even Kentucky Wesleyan, who's 0-12 in our conference, we only beat them 1-0. Like, they're not a bad team It's because there's fights every game. You talked about Ryan takes more of the balls in the air. And, uh, but is it physical for you after a game? Do you come out maybe, you know, bruised up a little bit, a little... Tired, certainly, but maybe even uh, damaged a little bit yeah. from the contact. Yeah, especially like if we have games like, like the Rockhurst, Duray, and S&T games coming up. They're huge games for us. We have to win them. So I'm sure I'll be coming out of there looking for some eyes to put on my legs, my knees. and Yeah, I've come out with some pretty hefty bruises sometimes. It's a big weekend and weekday game coming up next week against Rockhurst. What are you guys saying about this next three games? Really, we're just focusing on S&T now. We have, to, we have to do well. We want to do well. So S&T is on our mind right now. That's all we're thinking about. We don't, we don't even care about the other two games right now. We're thinking S&T, we're going to stomp them. Then we, who do we play next? It doesn't matter. So, We've talked a little bit about high school. You were playing up in high school. Uh, tell us about your high school career. Where did you go to high school and where did you grow up? Man, I went to the great Lee Summit North and uh, Lee Summit, obviously. But uh, I was a forward up there, and I loved it. I mean, I'm fast, so I just outrun everybody. And it's great. I would hit some bombs, some lasers from the top of the box. It's great. And, would you? Uh, I'm sure you enjoyed that immensely. Oh yeah, I loved it. My celebrations. I mean, I love it. Timmy Richardson at Lisa at North. He doesn't like it, but man, he loved. I love him, and he was a great coach for me. How about your family? Can you tell us a little bit about My them? My family. Well, I have a uh, mother and father, Mark and Angela. They're. Uh, they they grew up in the time where soccer really wasn't that big, so they really don't know much about it, but. They actually, when I was younger, they got in an adult league and they played. So my dad likes to tell me, toe poke in the upper 90. Those are the only two terms he really knows. But he's starting to learn a little bit more every time he comes to games. And then I have two brothers, uh, older one, Corey, and the younger one, Zach. Um, Corey went to Northwest, and he's an athlete just like me. Loves all kinds of things. Um, and then Zach goes to UCM. And uh, he also is an athlete. He al we're always wrestling, fighting, doing something, basketball always finding something to do with them. Finally here, I'm going to give you a dream scenario. I want you to tell me how this works out. Your last college game, ball's on your foot, you've just got a few seconds left, you need a goal. What happens next for Chad Newman? Oh man, I take the rip. No matter where I am, I could be 40 yards out, I'm taking the rip. I want the goal. I want the glory. I mean, I love the team and it really would depend on who else is around me, but if I would be able to hit a laser from the top of the 18, for the far post, oh, that would be glorious.